Didn't see you there. So, today, hi, by the way, I'm Andrew from Get Into Game Dev. I'm an independent game developer. I work in Game Maker, as well as custom engines, you know, for fun and stuff. And today I just want to talk about another one of my favorite patterns. The basic idea, let's start off with it. It's making your own initializers, zeroing out the data with your constructors. So what do I mean by that? So usually when we define a class in C++ or whatever language you want to work with, even within your engine, if you're using an engine, usually we have a constructor and the constructor is a single point where everything is built. This other way of thinking about it, it goes like this. You have your data fields in your variable, in your instance, in your class, and in your constructor, you just zero everything out. So you have a method, a function, that will zero everything out. That gets called in the constructor. And then when it comes time to actually initializing the thing, then we can use custom setters, you know, to set data bit by bit. What are the benefits of this? It's very subtle. For one thing, if it's sometimes useful to have functions that return whether they were successful, especially if we're trying to do something really tricky. You can't do that in a standard constructor. It's a single entry point that does everything. There are some issues there. Another thing, and this is more subtle, is arena allocators. So with a lot of engines, the act of making things can take a lot of time. The act of constructing new objects can take a lot of time. Even if we're not using an engine, even if we're doing our own system, every time we instantiate, you know, make an instance of a class, that goes somewhere in memory. And if we're not careful about that, that can get scattered all over the place. And you have really poor performance for the same thing. And then when we destroy an instance and create a new instance, that has overhead as well. So in game development, there's something called an arena allocator. Now, the way this works is imagine like the Colosseum, you know, you get your gladiators out and your gladiators are there and everyone's, yeah, go gladiators. And then some lions come out, you know, into the arena. They've been stored somewhere waiting to go. So they come out and then, you know, they have the fight and then some new monsters come out from the arena, you know, and they were all stored somewhere in the arena ready to go. So the really, the really basic rundown is an arena allocator is like a list of instances of a class which are ready to go and then when we create something we actually don't create anything we just grab something from the list we use that in our game world when we destroy things we actually don't destroy them we just do the old swappy trick where we get the last thing on the list well okay I'm getting ahead of myself. So we have this list, it's got a whole bunch of instances, and then some region of that list from position zero up to some offset is the active region. These are the things that are walking around in the world. If we want to destroy something, it can be as simple as just making the active region smaller and then swapping the elements around so that the thing we're destroying is outside of the active region. I'll put a diagram up, it'll make sense. So one of the big central points of this arena allocator is the ability to have instances that don't truly get created and don't truly get destroyed, but are reusable. And having methods which can zero out an instance are a really good way to make sure that we do not have junk data in the instance from its previous usage, which could either be a security issue or could just be useless. And zeroing everything out makes it more obvious when things should be reset, if that makes any sense. So this was just my little transmission for today. You know, I got stuff to do, but I will see you again soon. Bye.